Hi everyone, this is Pierre Rick from P2Design. In this video, I want to show you how you can get fun animation by keeping your rig simple. This is an animation I've done for Noara the Conspiracy from Atypic Studio. The idea is to overlay this icon animation with an FX to show that the character is getting a resistance bonus. The armor was sculpted and modeled by Anthony Pico, our junior character artist, based on a quick concept by Spoon, our illustrator and concept artist. Let's start with the rigging. I've asked our modeler to keep the different parts separated as I wanted it to be animated as a kind of senseiya armor assembling. The armor will build in a fast and snappy animation and then we will overlay some FXs to show that it's an elementary resistance using fire or poison or whether it's a physical resistance. The first thing I've done to rig it is to merge all those different objects in a single object. Merging the object together doesn't mean that the vertices will be merged, so these will still be separated closed mesh. And I will be able to move them separately as soon as they are assigned to a specific bone. So I've created a main controller and then I will create a controller for each part. The idea is to align the bone with the world space as much as possible, meaning that I won't be rotating the bone so that it fits the shoulder plate orientation, for example. While it could make sense visually wise, it will be a problem animation wise. Whenever I will want to change the location of the bone, this is going to be on its original state. So if I want to make it move vertically, I will have to move it on its Z axis and Y axis at the same time. And it will make things more complicated. Keeping the bones aligned with the world space is better. Even if here the Y axis is pointing on the X axis, it doesn't matter. I will just play with the Y axis curve to move the bone from left to right, but the main axes are aligned. So curve editing will be very intuitive. When I'm creating those bones, I'm trying to think where those uh, plates of armor will be rotating. And this is going to be the pivot point and the position of the bones. I'm starting to organize my bone layers using the bone layer manager done by Finn. This is an absolute must have if you are into rigging. And when I'm assigning the object to the armature, I will select with empty groups. Since all the linked vertices are separated, I won't be using weight painting to assign the weight. I will just select the different part and in the vertex group, assign them to each bone group. This is a method I truly advise you whenever you are skinning a robot or any art surfaces that won't be deforming. This way your weight painting will be just perfectly clean. Once all my deformation bones are created, I will create an intermediary bone that I generally name target and I will add a copy transform to the deformation bone from those target bones so that now I can work on those target bones, the deformation bones will follow and I won't be bothering then if I make any modification on those target bone or even destroy them since the deformation armature is kept in a separated layer and I won't be working on it anymore. This is a method I've shown in a previous video and also in my course The Art of Effective Rigging in Blender. My idea was to be able to input a bit of squash and stretch onto the shoulder plate since these are the most visible element in a top-down view. But I also wanted to be able to move and rotate each part of the shoulder plate separately. The copper part and the steel part. This is why I have those two small bones. The smallest is controlling the steel part, the other one the copper part of the shoulder plate and they are parented to this bone that is controlled by some kind of master and I've used a dampen track and stretch to constraint using this upper bone here. 
Once my mechanism was working, I've moved in edit mode the control shoulder on the pivot point of the shoulder pads so that it will currently rotate around this point and I will only be using the squash and stretch mechanism. Basically, the master controller controls the stretchable bone, which control the main shoulder bone, which control the secondary shoulder plate bone. Then I've added two secondary mechanism bones that will allow me to isolate the rotation of the secondary armor plate from the main armor plate. The first MCH will be the direct child of the main controller, while the second MCH will be the child of the root bone or whatever bone that is disconnected from the shoulder. And then the first children will constrain the secondary bone using a copy location so that it will follow the position of the shoulder but it won't copy its rotation. This is exactly the same mechanism I'm using to isolate neck rotation, shoulder rotation, etc. on a character. From there, for me, the rig was done. I've just put the different controllers into a specific layers and move all the other bone into an MCH layer that will be locked. And then I just assign different bone groups for each side and the main torso controller so that it will be easier for me to recognize them into the dope sheet and then I've started the animation. I've just blocked the initial position of the different armor parts and also the final position of the different bone, meaning that once the armor is assembled. I've also created the possibility to hide the different parts directly into the ring. This is something I've shown in this video. For this specific animation, I've used a straightforward animation with some kind of layered system, meaning that I won't be blocking each step of the animation for the wall armor, but I will fully animate each part separately. The fact that I have made a very simple rig will allow me to work with animation curve directly. So for the pace of the armor, I just wanted to create some jumpy effect whenever it appeared with a bit of squatch and stretch. So I just needed to work on the Z location of the curve and on the scaling curves. The idea then is to work kind of in this way. The idea then is to work the same way for each different part of the armor and then eventually revise the timing of each part compared to the other. For the base of the armor, I've made it pop, then jump up and add some squash and stretch as if it was the classical bouncing ball exercise. Then I've worked on the front and back plate. First of all, I've worked on their forward and backward position, making sure that they don't reach their final position at the same moment, so that the animation will be a bit more appealing. So I'm mainly focusing on the Y-axis and the Y-axis curve while animating to make it like impacting the main parts of the armor. And then I will also input a subtle backward motion as if the main armor part was absorbing the impact of the front part and also of the back part. Since the front and the back plate are parented to it, they will follow. But there is a downside to the fact that the front and the back plate are parented to the main armor component. They are following the initial animation of the main component, meaning that they have this jumpy motion with squash and stretch, and I don't want that. What I will do to solve this is that I will use space switching as shown in this previous video learned from Richard Lico animation Sherpa course. What I will do is bake the motion of the bone to an empty so that the motion of the bone will be set into world space and then I will reverse the constraint by constraining the bone to the empty. Then I just need to get rid of all the motion on the empty of the up and down squash and stretch that was inherited from the parent and I can work on polishing the animation, animating the empty. Then 
I will bake back the current animation I've done on the MT onto the constraint bone. So I know it does sound weird and it's quite complicated to follow like this. Just get back to this other video where you will have the full process in detail. But the idea is kind of get rid of the parenting hierarchy, at least temporary. And once we are happy with the result, we can bake back the animation onto the child bone within its child hierarchy. This is kind of editing the rig on the fly. And here is the result. I have then started to work on the shoulder plate. Since the rig is symmetrical, I've been animating only one side of the model. Then you can copy all the keyframe from one side, select the other side and press Ctrl Shift V to pass symmetrically the whole animation. I use kind of the same process as for the main parts of the torso, meaning that I've blocked the two positions in space and then I've directly started working with the animation curves. Once the main bone, once the main bone animation was polished, I've started to add some squash and stretch to the shoulder plate using the secondary bone. Once the squash and stretch is done, I play with the rotation of the shoulder so that there is a bit of rotation inputted into the movements that will increase the impression and the sensation of impact. So this is why we call it straightforward animation, meaning that you are polishing your animation on the fly and layered because I'm first working on the location of the bone, then I'm layering some squash and stretch, then I'm layering some rotation, and then I will layer some delay onto the secondary bone. The secondary bone controls the dark part of the shoulder plate. The trick I used to create this overlaid animation faster is that I've copied and pasted the rotation animation from the main bone onto the secondary bone and then I've slightly offset it in time and decreased the strength of the curve. Finally, I've worked on some additional motion as you can see here. On Sapi with the left side, I've selected the three bones, copy the curves and Ctrl Shift V them onto the bones on the right side. This will automatically copy the keys, mirroring them. After a few subtle tweaks, I've added a slight impact motion onto the main controller bone so that we can feel the weight of those shoulder plates. In the last pass of animation, I've increased the secondary motion linked to the impact and finally worked on the end of the animation where the armor is just disappearing by getting scaled to zero. So I've just added some stretching to the wall armor. And I was done with this animation. The rigging and animation process took me about 85 minutes only, which is a pretty decent budget. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope to see you very very soon.